Now integrating KNX into Home Assistant isn't really that difficult anymore. We have the user interface and also a very good documentation. But what if you have other systems integrated into Home Assistant and you want to send values from those systems to KNX? So for example from a Zigbee sensor or a Z-Wave sensor etc. Well this is what I want to show you in this video. And with that, hi and welcome back on my YouTube channel to this new video. Now in this video we want to take a look at how we can send values that we receive from other devices in Home Assistant to KNX so that we can use it for example to show it in displays or for other automations etc. So therefore what I have done is that I have integrated some Zigbee devices. As you can already see here we have a window contact which I can use to send the value to KNX for example to my heating system and as you can see this value changes here and this is what I want to send to KNX. And now here on the right hand side you can see that I also have a Zigbee socket where I also get some meter information so some analog values for example the voltage and also the meter itself. Now in order to send values to KNX, we now could go ahead and create automations. So head into settings and create an automation here where the trigger is a state change, for example, of my binary sensor, and then I'll send a value to KNX. Now, this would be possible. However, there is a much easier way to that. Because what we can do is that we can go into our YAML file. So I'll head into my Studio Code server. And in here we already created, for example, a cover entity, maybe some other entities. And what we can do in this YAML file is that we can expose values. Now, what does that mean? Well, therefore, let us take a look at the official documentation. By the way, if you want to know more about connecting KNX to Home Assistant, then maybe consider checking out my brand new video course, the KNX Home Assistant Primer. That's the English version of my successful German video course. And in there I'll show you everything that you need to know about connecting those two worlds together. So for example, we take a look at how we can use KNX Secure in Home Assistant, how we can use KNX in Home Assistant Automations and much, much more. So simply check out the video course over on Udemy. I have linked it in the video description and in the pinned comment. And if you are interested, then don't hesitate to enroll into it. You would really support me by doing that. Now down below here you can see that we have the option to expose entity states or attributes to the KNX bus. And that's pretty straightforward. In our configuration we simply have to create an expose entry. And down below we have an array of all the entities or attributes that we want to send to KNX. And first of all, the easiest thing is that we expose time and date to our KNX system. Because Home Assistant has the current time and date and why not use it to send it to the KNX bus to show it for example on displays. And so therefore, first of all, what I'll do is I click here expose or I'll enter here expose, then the first entry. And here we first of all have to specify the type that we want to expose. So you can see here type time and the address. And I also simply copy that to make it a little bit easier. And with that we have first of all the time that we'll send to KNX. But I have set it up a little bit differently in my project because if you take a look into the group addresses here under measurements we'll see I have a time group address a date group address and a date and time group address because those are basically the three data point types KNX knows for that. And that's no problem at all because all those three data types Home Assistant also knows. Because if we check and scroll a little bit down we can see that under type we can set time, date and date time. So therefore I'll copy this entry here three times time, date and date time. So I just forgot the group addresses, therefore those were 10, 11 and 7. So time was 10, date was 11 and date time was 7. And that's first of all the easiest yeah, value that we can send to KNX. So I'll head over to the developer tools, check my config and restart KNX. And with that we'll send date and time to the KNX bus. 
And we'll also can take a look at it in the EDS6 if I open up the diagnostics and start the diagnostics here. What we can see is, yeah, first of all, basically nothing. But what I can do is that I can send a read request to it. So I'll send a read request to the address 0010 time. Click here read. And now you can see that here we get 16 o'clock and 22. So this is the current time. Now we can get the current date as well. So read. Don't worry, in between here, this is another device. So here we get the date. And last but not least, if I send a read request towards my date and time, here you can see we get date and time. Now, how often does Home Assistant yeah, send the values to the Koenig system? Well, therefore, let us take a look here down below. And if we scroll up a little bit further here, we can see that those values or the values of time, date and date time are sent every hour onto the KNX bus, which is fully sufficient. So that was pretty straightforward. But how can we now send a value like here, this window contact onto the KNX system? Well, therefore, we'll simply go ahead and create a new entry here. So in my configuration. And here I'll call it type. And then now what type? Well, for the binary sensor, that's pretty straightforward because we have the types binary, time, date, date, time, which we already saw. So basically binary. And then we also have the type of the Koenig sensor. So if I scroll a little bit further, here we get a table with yeah all the data point types Home Assistant supports or Home Assistant can send you values in this format. So therefore here in this case, as we don't have an analog value, but a binary value, we simply use as type binary, then the address. Now in my case here, I will use, if I go to notifications here, I have the window living room status, which I want to use for that. So 060. And then how do we enter which entity we want to expose? Well, we simply enter entity underline ID. So if we go back into the documentation, we can see that we'll simply have to enter the entity ID and that's basically all we need to do. Or if we want to expose an attribute, we can use this format here. So first of all, the entity and then the attribute of it. So if I go ahead, entity ID and then binary and here we see we already get the auto completion so here this was the window contact and now if i hit save check my config restart knx and then head over to the eds into the diagnostics maybe clear it to see a little bit more and now if i close the window contact we can see that here we get an off value if we open it, we see we get an on value. So that's basically how we can expose, for example, a binary value. Now I still have some analog values. And there we can see that if I go to overview, I have, for example, the voltage, which I now want to send. So, so the voltage has the entity ID sensor and then Schneider Electric socket voltage. And now here it is important to check this list here down below. So if we scroll down here to type and to KNX sensor, then here down below, we get all the value types that Home Assistant supports. And here you can now basically choose the data point type that you need in KNX. So this is what you need to check. So for example, if you want to show this value on a display, so for example, a touch display, I would go ahead and first of all, check which data point types this display needs because some need a two byte value, some a four byte value, etc. Now here in my case, I have already created the group addresses for that. So down below here, I have the main group sockets. And in here, for example, I have the group address 402 socket living room power. And here I've already connected my touch display to it. And here you can see it only supports four bytes values. So power and voltage both being four bytes values. And so therefore we check for a four byte value that we can use therefore. So here we have four byte signed, four U count and four byte float. But what is now the correct value? 
Well, that's pretty easy because to simply go into the EDS, click on your group address, and then here you can see data type. It starts with the number 13. And so therefore you also check here for 13. So you know that you need a four byte signed value now here in this case. And so here I'll use, for example, yeah, let us simply use active energy because we can see here we don't have a data point type for the voltage that isn't really that necessary. So I'll simply use active energy, go into the video studio code server and then create two new entries. So first of all, type active energy and then address. And here we saw that it was 403 and 402. So 402. And so here we can see that first of all we have the power and then I'll simply copy it with the address 403 and here now I need the voltage. So with that being set up I check the config then restart KNX and go ahead into the EDS and then if I for example send a read request to 402 we see that we get the correct value from home assistant. Now if I send a re request to 403 we have a read request here we can see 232 now here it states kilowatt hours but obviously it's voltage. So with that you can see how we can expose not only binary values but also analog values. So let us quickly check the documentation what else we can set up. So I'll go back here to expose. Now the next things that we can set up is that first of all we can also yeah, expose attributes of entities. Then we have a default value. So a default value if we don't have any state or a state with the value none there we can set up for example that the value sent to knix should be zero or false etc. Then we have a value template and that's pretty handy because if you know templating in Home Assistant then you can use that for example to manipulate the analog values here. So for example you can do some equations to not send the value in kilowatt hours but in watt hours by simply multiplying it with thousand for example. Then we have a cooldown time so a minimum time that is necessary between two telegrams to not send thousands of telegrams onto the KNX bus within let's say one minute. So here we could say for example a cooldown of 60 seconds that would mean that Home Assistant is only allowed to send a telegram to KNX every 60 seconds for this specific exposed entity. And then last but not least this is sort of the read flag in KNX with that we can say whether Home Assistant should react to read requests. This is what we just saw. I send a read request via the EDS. So I'll quickly do that. Send a read request and then Home Assistant sends us the actual value. So we can also disable that if we don't need that. Yeah, and that's basically how we can expose values from Home Assistant to KNX. So I would say that's it for this video. I hope that this was helpful for you. If so, consider a like and don't forget to check out my new video course, the KNX Home Assistant Primer over on Udemy. You can see it linked down below in the description as well as in the pinned comment. If the video was helpful, then consider a like and subscribe to the channel to not miss any new videos here. And with that, I would say I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.